Hello there guys, hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to have a look at 31 units from various battalion troop trees, which will include their main troops, their elite troops, their caravan guards, their militia garrisons, and lastly the Wolfskin's minor faction. But wait a second you ask, what about these guys? Well, while I was looking through over 60,000 lines of code, I came across this bit of code. Now you wonder, what are we even looking at? Well, we know these guys are the Gallo Glass minor faction, which is reinforced by the fact that this particular unit we're looking at is the first unit in the troop tree. But what does this code have to do with them? Well, here we can see the name of this unit, which is the same as this unit. However, if you do go on to search for the Gallo Glass clan in the encyclopedia, you're going to come out empty handed, because even though their units are programmed into the game, their lords and factions aren't. So that's the reason these guys are going to miss today's spotlight, as you cannot incorporate them into your party as of yet. Before we have an in-depth look at the battalion troops, I need to tell you about the new skill rating and armor rating values for troops that I came up with for this video, since people have requested it on the last video. Which is a little bit out of date if you're playing on the beta branch of the game by the way. The mathematical genius that I am, I realize that troops of the same tier have a lot in common. For example, all troops within the same tier cost the same to recruit, require the same amount of experience to level up have the same upkeep values, eat the same amount of your party's food, etc, etc. So these factors are not taken into consideration for the formula of the armor and skill rating. So how did I calculate these ratings you ask? Well, each tier has a maximum value at which any skill is capped. However, we know that a spearman doesn't need skills in riding, bow, crossbow and so on. So we add the values of a unit's useful skills and divide them by the skill's combined maximum amount, which is 300 for every skill. So if we're calculating off of 2 skills, we divide by 600, 3 skills, 900, and 4 skills, 1200. This will give us a good idea if a particular unit has a skill rating above or below its tier's average value. The skill ratings range from 0 to 10, and here are the average skill ratings for each tier. The armor value is a little bit of a different story though. We have 4 armor values, namely head, body, arm, and leg armor, all of them have their own maximum possible values. I obtained these maximum values by going into the game and equipping myself with the best rated armor I could find. So we divide each one of the unit's current armor values by their maximum amount and add them. This limits ratings range from 0 to 4 and gives us a little number guide on whether a unit has light, medium, heavy or overpowered armor. However, this isn't the most efficient indicator since a unit with a leg armor rating of 26 gets half a point to its AR. So there are some units that peak a little bit into medium armor category but really are still lightly armored due to the low armor values in other areas. Now getting into the sweet stuff, the pros and the cons of Batania's army. Fians, having the best ranged units in the game in your roster sure makes it easy. However these elite units are hard to come by in early stages of the game and due to lack of archers in their main troop tree you run the risks of being easily suppressed by enemy ranged fire in early game. And Stalin already managed to prove to us that quantity is superior to quality. Excellent spearmen, but Tanya boasts some of the best and heaviest spearmen units worth investing in. You should always be able to repel enemy cavalry charges with your spearmen, whether they are infantry or skirmishers. The cavalry isn't great, but it isn't terrible either. However, letting them loose against cataphracts or Vlandian knights is an easy recipe for disaster, since they're only medium armored and only viable against enemy archer formations or lightly armored units. They boast excellent skirmishers with large shields and usually come equipped with spears so they can be used efficiently as a distraction for enemy cavalry that day I just charged at you. While your fians rain hell on them or to protect your own cavalry from clashing against enemy cav while you eliminate it giving an upper edge on the battlefield. Same can be said about their shock troops, which for me are actually better than that of the Sturgeons, simply because their tier 5 are better armoured. They mightn't have access for some shield break in action, but the Falksmen are great at melee combat, especially when flanking. However, most of their troops remain medium armoured, with rare heavy armoured exceptions with the Fians who will probably not participate in melee very often, or they shouldn't at least, the Wildling and the trained veteran Spearmen, which are all tier 5 and 6 units. All the battalion units have 2 to 5 armor and weapon loadouts. Compared to the last video you will see the armor rating for all the loadouts for each unit. I still didn't come up with a way to rate weapons or DPS rating of sorts since damage calculation isn't simple. 
and most weapons have a lot of different aspects, for example a sword has thrust and cut damage, but you also have to take the length and the swing thrust time into consideration, and other values. So as I work hard on getting a DPS or weapon rating, for now a weapon list for each unit will have to do. Without further ado, let's have a look at the units. Battalion volunteers aren't special, their skill rating is average for their tier, however if you get a little lucky you might get a few with set for armor loadout, which will make them a natural looter exterminator. They're generally armed with some peasant weapons, but everything about them screams meat shield. Clan warriors are among the average, however they already carry spears, maybe not as durable, but they can get a lucky stab against an oncoming knight. Being armed with a shield also makes them a bit tankier than they seem, even though most loadouts lack head armor, leaving them prone to sick AI one-tap trick shots. Trained warriors are your first medium armored spearmen, with numbers they can manage a fight against heavier cav, and shouldn't struggle with tier 4 cav at all. They're armed with better spears and swords, however I wouldn't count on them in a fight against infantry above their tier. The picked warrior is the first unit in the roster that has been defeated by the balance team of the game. His important one-handed and polearm skills fall to their tier 2 levels. While his athletics slightly above the average for tier 4, the armor gets significant upgrade making them more durable, but leaving him with a skill rating far below 3.33. Trained Spearmen, or Oatsworn as I name them, return to normality with their combat skills, however their speed suffers a bit. Even though their skill rating is still below the average, they are a force to be reckoned with due to their heavy armor, especially with their first loadout. Enemy cavalry should avoid you like sheep avoid wolves. These men can come with either an axe giving them an upper edge against shields, and a sword, making them better against lighter armored opponents. Scouts have a nice average skill rating, well armored, falling just short of the heavy category, but his arms and legs are still prone to enemy spears while he's doing a drive-by on the enemy ranged formations. He is also armed with a rather poor tier 2 spear and axe. He comes with two varieties of shields, I would keep a few of them around for acting as a distraction for enemy cav or ranged units, but I wouldn't be too fond of recruiting armies of these men, since I think spearmen are better worth it. Horseman. Skill wise he holds true to his tier's average. It's hard to rate this unit overall as a heavy cav since you have a chance of 1 in 3 to get the heavy loadout for this guy, especially when the other two thought it's a great idea to exchange their helmets with woodrunner caps. Their weapons see quite an upgrade coming from tier 2 axe and spear to tier 4 axe and spear. Woodrunners are a pretty good skirmisher unit with light armor. They do carry a shield to keep themselves alive a bit longer. Don't let their Thor load up fool you though with its armor rating since it's just their head that is fortified better than the castle compared to the rest of his armory. Raiders are your true test before becoming a shock troop by creating a spear infantry that decided to fall on his head during one battle and exchange his shield for a throwing axe, giving him some skirmishing capability which frankly enough puts his throwing skill ahead of his polearm skill, some of them also decided to ditch their helmet for the real berserker experience. Volksmen are your first shock infantry unit for Batania. They have a nice average skill rating but keep in mind they're lightly armored, unless the melee AI targets legs or head in combat. So the armor rating betrays us a little bit here. He's only armed with the Falks since it's the only weapon he needs to do some chopping. Veteran Falksmen are a well-rounded medium armored shock infantry, armed with their own Falia and three sets of throwing axes which is more than they'll ever throw throughout their entire lifespan anyway. If you're going to include some of them in your roster make sure to keep them behind your shielded infantry, unless you want them to share the fate of Rick and Stark. Coming back around to our skirmishers, we see this absolute tier 3 unit of a man. Coming around with tier 4 stats, except for his poorer polearm, brings his average way above his tier. However, don't let that deceive you, because he only gets light to medium armor, and two of the three loadouts only come equipped with throwing axes instead of javelins. Veteran skirmishers also come with a high skill rating for their tier, even though their one-handed suffers a bit in favor of boosting his polearm skills. It's hard to call him a heavy unit since his head and leg armor are only medium and arms are light, unless he keeps getting slapped in the body which is unlikely due to his shield. Wildling is a true jewel in the battalion roster. He's a heavy skirmisher that doubles up as a frontline heavy infantry, and if all goes out for a veteran spearman he can plug that hole too, maybe not as efficiently, but he really highlights the versatility of the battalion army. Even though his head armor stays the same, his body armor is still heavy, however compared to the veteran skirmisher, his arm armor goes from light to medium and leg armor from medium to heavy. 
Mounted Skirmisher is one of the units you probably don't want to invest your time in, since scouts and horsemen are way better anyway. The poor throwing skill and medium armor mixed in with the lack of couchable lance or spear really puts this cavalry unit behind, especially when out of javelins to throw. Now moving on to Elites of Batania, the undeniably best bowman in the game. Highborn Youth sure comes with light armor but makes up for it with barbed arrows and a higher bow skill compared to other tier 2 units. As long as you keep them out of harm's way, they should easily get themselves to rank up. Highborn Warriors continue to master the art of the bow. Their medium armor allows them to take on some of the other medium and light units in melee combat with their tier 2 handed swords. However, due to lack of shields, I wouldn't be throwing them in the front lines or leaving them exposed to enemy cavalry or ranged units. Batanian Hero's bow skill already surpasses that of regular tier 5 units. He comes with heavy armor making enemy infantry think twice before trying to rush him, but like with his predecessor I still wouldn't expose him to too much cavalry or ranged units that may come his way. Fians are your introduction to AI's MLG bow sniping capabilities with a hefty 210 bow skill and a 5.89 skill rating way above the tier 5's 4.33 average which highlights their elite status. Even though their armor suffers around the arm and leg areas a little bit, they are well capable of handling themselves in the melee. Fian champions don't mess about on the battlefield and get straight into sniping whatever comes into their sights. They possibly outrange every other ranged unit and come with even heavier armor. Although their arm and leg armor dips further down, with a hefty skill rating of 8, enemies sure get their PTSD triggered when they hear the trees speak Batanian. Armed Trader is an absolute meme of a unit that has managed to cheat both my skill and armor ratings. Even though his athletics and one-handed skills are pretty high for tier 3, this man graduated from a very bad archery school. In fact, he must have just slept with his teacher to get through the archery course in the first place, with his hefty bow skill of 0, managing to score perfectly on his average skill rating. His armor is definitely light, but being a trader allows him to find some medium head and leg armor. If they ever find themselves in my party, they'll go straight to the chopping block. Caravan Guard aren't anything spectacular by any means, however they are more versatile and better equipped and armored than the scouts we looked at earlier, so if given the opportunity I would always snatch these into my party instead of the scouts. Veteran Caravan Guard These medium armored shock cap know how to handle looters and bandits all too well that try to set their eyes to the caravan they're protecting. They're as good as the horsemen, also they didn't swap out their helmets for some poor ass caps and are generally worth to be kept around when given the chance to keep them. Caravan Master is very lackluster for a tier 5 infantry. Coming equipped only with a sword and a medium armor definitely makes him an expensive to keep meat shield. Militia Archer is a pretty okay unit for tier 2. One handed skill is a bit lackluster and they lack shields and their melee weapon are tier 1. However if the enemies don't reach your walls during a siege these will do their job well for a tier 2 unit. Veteran Militia Archer follows a similar pattern to regular Militia Archer, with up to standard bow skill with other skills a bit low. You have an even chance to get a medium or lightly armored loadout of this unit. Keep in mind that even though I graded them as longbowmen, they also have a 50-50 chance to spawn with a shortbow. If you feel like you don't have enough archers only using fians, don't be afraid to grab these guys into your party whenever possible, just make sure to keep them out of melee trouble. Militia Spearmen are actually a very good tier 2 unit, coming with light to medium armor and with higher one handed stat compared to its tier. Speed and polearm skills drop a little bit, but they still uphold an average skill rating. They come with a shield and are armed with clubs, swords and axes. Militia Veteran Spearmen come with medium to medium high armor and a bit of a lackluster skill rating, but overall they are well equipped for the job of protecting the walls compared to their tier 2 counterparts. Coming to Wolfskin's minor faction, the young wolf is lightly armored with heavy arm armor on his second loadout. With a slightly above rating for his tier, I would definitely recruit them into the party whenever given the chance to, since their final and third form can be rated as an elite longbowman. Seasoned Wolf has plenty of experience hunting more than just wolves. Coming with medium armor and slightly above average skill rating, this guy is a pretty good bowman for a tier 3 unit. Chosen Wolves may not come with heavy armor, but their skill rating and equipment definitely outranks the Battalion Hero, which is the same tier as this guy. Definitely try to keep some in your ranks since they're rarer to come about than the Fians themselves. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed and learned something new about Battalion's troops today. If you liked the video, go on ahead and slap the like button. If you didn't like it, slap the dislike button. 
And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Also leave a comment on which faction you'd like to see a unit guide being made on next. Like last time, I left a spreadsheet down below if you want to have quick access to these stats and it's actually a lot neater than the last one, believe it or not. Maybe you're also wondering why I'm using arena combat as background video compared to the last video where I used actual units and some proper combat. Well, 14 hours worth of combat videos I recorded got corrupted and I was way too salty to re-record those again. So I just jumped into the arena. Having said all that guys, have a good day and stay safe in the lands of Calradia.